Welcome everyone to Skyrim 10 AD, ASA Podcasting's D&D Adventures in Skyrim. It has been 10 years since Alduin the World Eater's defeat at the hands of the Dragonborn. But it is not his tale we are here to tell. Before we tell it, some introductions from our players. Bati is the young wood elf new, fresh to Skyrim, idolizing the dragonborn. Uh, a bard by practice, a songstress, po- poetry, uh, any sort of storytelling um, at, at her fingertips. Wanting to go to Skyrim in order to hone the art of, of storytelling and song by not only studying the deeds but living through and going to the places that the dragonborn himself her idol experienced so uh here comes uh body across the border meeting luke fresh across the uh across the way there and uh wanting to just further her knowledge of the dragonborn trying to find as much information as she can and live the same experiences the dragonborn did Jaquai is a uh, Jaquai is a Khajiit uh, monk uh, who's studying the way of the open hand. Um, He is in Skyrim looking for his brother and uh, ran into Luke and body on the road um, as he was uh, carefully studying a wolf uh, while up in a tree. (laughs) Um, they they you know disrupted his uh his studies and um dispatched the wolf and uh Jaquai, you know despite their indiscretion decided to uh go ahead and travel with them very very nice Jaquai always awesome. has the, the the best perspective on any on any study yeah, wow <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so I'm playing Luke, a uh, as referenced earlier, a cleric of of uh, of kind or Kinnereth, whichever your your preference. Uh, a a Nord by birth, but an Imperial by uh, uh, by, uh, by by where he's raised. He was raised in Cyrodiil. This is his first trip to Skyrim along with Bati, uh, and he was uh, uh, inspired by his his deity to to make a trip to Skyrim and has had a number of. Uh, of, of, of revelations that, that seem to relate to, in, in some degree, particularly to him. So he's still a bit befuddled by it all, but is, uh, is, is doing his best to, to understand what's, uh, what's happening around him uh, with, uh, with all of his friends. And I am playing Mouse, who is uh, opposite of Luke, was uh, born an Imperial, but uh, grew up in Skyrim. Uh, he was orphaned and then lived with his aunt, until she was killed uh, when he was 14. And from then he basically lived on the streets and hence his urchin background. He is a bit of a rogue, uh, but not a very practical one. He's young, brash, and uh, uh, a little overconfident. Um, and he met up with the group in Falkreath when they had when they uh, came down from Haldir's Cairn at the, at the beginning of their journey into Skyrim and offered his services as a guide hello and welcome to session 9 episode 25 of Skyrim 1080 Um, this is just a little refresher on the story so far and um, I've decided to record this after uh, the fact uh, because the the refresher I done on live on the on the session uh, was not very coherent due to uh, a rather nasty head cold. But uh, if you want to hear that nasty uh, train wreck, you can uh, go to the YouTube page uh, of ASA Podcasting and catch the live feed there. But this is just a hopefully um, a more coherent, uh, put together uh, refresher on the score story so far. Um, so our intrepid gang um, arriving in the hold of Hall Creef. Um, wanting to put their talents to use and um, sort of like help out where they can. Um, 
they've had a few adventures with uh, some spiders in a, in help clearing out a mine, running across some Draugr. Um, heading into the main town of Falkreath, they then uh, fought some more Draugr that seemed to be escaping from a crypt and managed to stumble across what appeared to be the beginnings of a skooma operation, uh, starting up in the hold of Falkreath. Um, making a new friend of Nenya, the steward um, of Falkreath, she tasked them with trying to find um, the perpetrators uh, of this fiendish scheme and put an end to it um, with our promises of rewards. Um, th- through inv- investigations, they it led them to Helgen Keep, um, the... Um, the famed um, beginning of, of the stories of the Dragonborn and his arrival, uh, and also the arrival of the dragons in Skyrim. They headed there, and um, sure enough, ran across some bandits, um, all carrying bottles of skooma. Uh, it took them some while. They uh, hooked up with a new friend um, who try to help him out but uh with personality personality clashes he had to uh ma- make his way back to the forests um but they then ran across another new friend uh, in the name of Lenil, who was being what appeared to be held captive uh by the bandit chief um a man by the name of broto hetelius um later uh, later defeated uh, by the gang and captured and brought back to Falkreath to serve his time in the jail as punishment for his crimes. Uh, also appearing to be somebody from Luke's past. Um, Luke, um, not sharing too much with the rest of the gang, seemed to show his disdain for not only the skooma but for this Broto. Um, after speaking with uh, their new uh, young friend, uh, Lenil, who came from Riften on a whole orphanage, and informed them that his big brother, his Anarchy, um, from the orphanage, had been taken captive by the boss of the, uh, the skooma operation. Uh, with this information, they headed back to Falkreef and left Broto in jail and uh, informed the uh, steward Nenya and the Jarl of Walkree, Sidgir. Upon hearing this information, Sidgir tasked the troop with heading off and putting an end to this boss and his operation, uh, and also in the process, uh, freeing Anarchy if possible. Uh, they learned that um, with an investigation check from... Um, I've forgotten his name. Um, from our rogue uh, mouse, he <laughs> um, that the um, base of the operations for this boss was at Falkreath Tower, just south of Inalta, Lake Inalta. Uh, heading there, they uh, entered in to Falkreath Tower to discover a. Um, a broken through a uh, piece of wall that led down into a sunken fort uh, that had been long taken over or reclaimed by the forest. Heading down into it, they ran across um, Lenil's anarchy, uh, but turning out, she turned out to be not exactly how Lenil described. Um, also running into what appeared to be a Daedra. Uh, after a, a few attacks from... Uh, Luke and Jaquai, it appeared to be a spider Daedra hiding as a in, in a cloud of smoke. Uh, seemed to be an agent of Mafala. Uh, after freeing Anarchy, they headed into the next room, which seemed to have its foundations wrecked by a um, below the surface river that had carved its way through the foundations of the fort, blocking our way to what appeared to be an Argonian alchemist working on his poison. 
Um, he greeted them by dumping a Daedra heart into uh, the uh, cauldron in front of him. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and uh, causing it to pump poisonous smoke into the air. He then dived into the river just before him and transformed into a massive crocodile. And thus combat ensued. Um, a few struggling battles. And they managed to, with the help of Anarchy and Lenil, uh, get the alchemist down with their final blow from Jaquai. They... Um, had a quick search around and had a look in the chest, didn't explore it fully, and found a locked door where they found an unconscious Dunma. Um, even though uh, all out of spells, um, through uh, Luke, uh, his um, deity, Kine, through him, cast the spell Lesser Restoration to lessen the, the damage and the exhaustion of their Dunmer friend and some a quick medicine check and a dose of skooma managed to bring her back round where they learned that this was the legendary alchemist Avrusa Serethi held captive by this Argonian alchemist um, she informed them that with their help she could um, discover a cure to the poison that um, had infected herself, Lanil, and George, and by some mistaken attempt by Mouse to end the poisonous gas, had caused to add the poison to all the uh, underground waterways of Falkreath, and infecting quite possibly a large population of Falkreath Hold. Avrus had known that this was the Argonian's uh, final plan and uh, set about to um, gain their aid to try and end, um, put an end to it and uh, destroy the poison. And that's where we last left off. So we'll get back into the session and uh, hopefully this is a little bit better than uh, what was on the, uh, the original recording. Thank you. And enjoy. Uh, just so everybody knows, I am suffering from really bad cold, so I'm probably going to miss like loads of stuff. But uh, don't worry, I have got every confidence in uh, my players to pick up the slack. Um, so, what would you guys like to do? Um, you have just um, been joined on this side. If you're all on roll twenty, um, on this side of the. Of, I'll, I'll say river um, we'll go with that or stream um, by George and Plenil. Um you've been informed by um, Avrusa um, still not all together she's barely standing up she's leaning heavily on, on the tables here trying to keep herself standing up um, Mouse you've been helping her get, uh, acquire all the ingredients and you had um, a quick look in this chest up here as well. The one with the stripes on top of it, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. yeah, we've opened that and we had a quick look inside, um, but we haven't fully explored what's in there yet. Um, did I open the trap over there where I'm standing? I forget what you did. Uh, you found some normal Nern roots and some uh, crimson Nern roots. So she, I gave those to her as well, okay. Yeah. So we're at a what do you do next point here? Yeah, what would you like to do? Uh, well, a mouse um, is going to... Uh, where, where's Luke? Uh, sorry, Here. I'm lost. Here. Okay, so I'm going to go over to Luke. Uh, Luke, um, I know where there is a Spriggan Grove. It's to the, a little bit to the south and west of here. Um, so, 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 Colin, what does, what does Luke know of the Spriggan? I think... Um, when we were we were it's toward the end of the session last time, and I, I had a couple notes. Um, I, I I made some notes, and maybe this is wrong. It, it, there might be some way to to um, 
to strike a bargain with the Spriggan or yeah. w- w- short of yeah. short of having to just murder one of them? Is is there possibly some way yeah. to acquire a, a tap root without without getting into a fight with them? Yeah, uh, so Rooster did, did say that she has no qualms about uh, hiring people to go and kill Spriggans and take the tap roots and uh, the Spriggan sap or anything like that. But she says she um, was like worried that you would be against that, considering your faith, um, because uh, Spriggans like uh, protect forested areas and um, sort of like try and take back, like you know, from old ruins to take them back for the forest and even protect ancient and de- uh, dangerous magic sort of like you know uh stop them from spreading to the rest of the uh, of scurry so um she said it may be possible for somebody like you maybe to entreat the um uh, the spriggan to sort of like you know uh ask for its aid instead of trying to kill it but that would probably come down to some sort of check okay so. and and sidebar, I know it's not itself a plant, but Body would be a big fan of, of Spriggans, I'm assuming, right? Uh, yes, I mean, you, you did grow up in um, in Valenwood, um, so yeah, like, you know, so okay. like forested as you want to keep the, as much protected. Uh, the, whatchamacallit, the, the Green Pact only, only um, is about the, the Valenwood. You don't have to worry about no. sort of like you know picking up wood or sort of like destroying okay. flowers in other forests. All That's right, where right. the the pact comes into. But um, they won't like you know uh, most bosmers won't like just just destroy every uh, piece of um, uh, vegetation. So they'll try and sort of like help it out. Mm-hmm. And they're they're you know also mainly carnivorous as as a result of that too, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, so, 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 mouse. Uh, I, 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 th- I think we should try to acquire a tap root with without violence, if possible. Uh, That's fine. That's fine with me. I, I'll, I'll help in any way I can. Uh, so, lo- looking at Evrusa, someone should stay with Evrusa. She did. She did say to you that she needs at least two people to stay behind. It's probably going to be up to you guys of who you'd want to choose to stay behind I with it. curled up on the table next to the brazier like any good cat would be. <laughs> he, he he has finished oh, yeah. he's just finished his uh, his um, short rest, his meditation. He's just finished it. Yes. Uh, he had some revelations during that time, but he is just he's just coming out of his meditation now. So I, I before before saying anything, I take a look over at uh <clears throat> um at um <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember our, our in two NPCs. So we have Rusa. We have uh, Aniki's mm-hmm. real name is we George. learned is George. 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 Yeah. So George is how is is after her uh, captivity is George um, reasonably in reasonably good shape now that she's had some time to recover and et cetera. Yeah, she took his- a short rest, uh, same as um, Jaquai, um and so so did uh, Lenny. But uh, he wouldn't leave her side, so she managed to roll some hit dice, and uh, she's back up to full. And she's she's all uh, her and both her and Lenny both have leveled up to level two, so they're probably uh, a little tougher now than they were before. Uh, so uh, I th- I. <laughs> Now that we're now that we're with uh, George, I'm going to presume that she's a little bit the brains of the operation. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, George, or, or will you and Laniel agree to stay with Evrusa and, and give her comfort and aid with uh, any uh, anything she may need help with, and make sure that she uh, she remains uh, in, uh, she, she remains safe and healthy here while we go seek a, a taproot. Uh, she's she just crawled out of the of the war there and she's just um walking right over to you with her hands out waiting for her weapons she would you'd picked up her weapons i believe out of the chest uh the yeah, two scimitars we, you had them so you, you were holding them up from, from the other side of the river yeah um, yeah yeah so she's, she's just got her hands out looking at you waiting for her weapons and and i i hand them hand them both to her uh, present present her her weapons and I, presumably uh, Lenny's got his uh, what is it a big maul or something some kind of big ass 
big ass club of some sort. It was, was and the, the handle it handle of it is mostly branch. It's still mo- most of it still has the bark on it, apart from like uh, uh, sanded down and then leathered area for where the hands where it's supposed to be held by the with the two big mitts that he's got. Um, I think uh, on the side of it you had red because uh, it was just written in common uh, up the side of it. It was uh, shield sunder was the name of the of the two handed mole. Um, and yeah, you put that to the side. Um, uh, George sort of like you know starts getting a re- weapons and putting sort of like our scimitars on either side of our of our armor. She goes, I, I don't mind. Um, do thank you for um, uh, for the timely rescue. Um, so uh, I am at your disposal. Um, Although I am no healer, and uh, pr- preferably maybe somebody who has some experience with that will probably be staying with the uh, with the lady. I heard them talking. She is apparently quite the alchemist. Um, keeping her alive would probably be the most important thing. So, hmm, we have a bit of a uh, a quandary here. Uh, ba- uh, ba- Bati, or uh, now, j- j- remind me. This is I- I'm 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 forgetting. I- I'm sure Luke would remember. I- has this has Jaquai Jaquai has not shown any 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 spell casting abilities? Correct. None. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. So, so uh, Bati has some some skill at healing, as as do yeah. I. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this you're is, not uh, too. Sh- you're you through the chaos. You're not too sure how many spell slots body is used though. Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, how many? Uh, how many healing potions do we have to leave behind? Instead of well, leaving, we don't like to break up the band. <laughs> well, in this case, we could we could leave the the two people who would most likely be squeamish about. Uh, killing a Spriggan if that's what it takes. I, I kind of want to be there to make sure you guys don't kill us. Well, I think we need Luke because he might be able to tame the, the Spriggan or make or strike a bargain with the Spriggan, so we don't want we can't leave Luke behind, even if he's squeamish about killing one. As long as you promise to do the Spriggan no harm, I, I suppose I could stay behind. Well, to be honest, Body, the, you know, the, the greater good is is uh is going to win out here uh spriggan or no spriggan i mean I, I know it's my fault i've poisoned the waters but uh thousands could die um uh, so with all due respect we have to do what we have to do and and, and luke luke luke's doesn't say anything but he, he's really not happy with the situation but he nods in agreement with mouse that uh you know luke's you know luke, luke's Luke's personal morality is is definitely uh, is, is, has the greater good in in mind. So uh, it's 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 a difficult uh, it's a difficult bargain, but that may be where we find ourselves. So I actually, I'll say I'll say that I, I, I nod in agreement to Mouse, and I say it's it's a difficult choice, but we may find ourselves having to make it. Yes, so. and so be it. And uh, Body sings a a a, um, a blessing of peace in a in a, in a brief song. So we we have in the party stash we have I, I I have noted one healing potion. Yeah, I have none that I know of. Which we can leave, but we can leave that with body. But body, do you have? Uh, I've got. Do you, you have some 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 healing capacity left in you? Oh gosh. Um. Listening to to this, um, does say to you, um, uh, he, not of my caliber, but he wasn't completely useless. So maybe you should check around. Maybe you'll find something that may helpful. If if I remember correctly, uh, says Mouse, uh, though I'm awful at alchemy uh Nurnroot has healing properties does it not 
lady of Rusa. Found some in the trap door, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I don't really want to get in, but and she just points over to the chest in the corner, and then sort of like you know nods over to the body. You know, maybe uh, he had something lying around that could probably be of of use. As I said, he wasn't completely useless, but he did steal most of it from me. <laughs> so, so maybe we we tumble the place and see what we find. I thought we already did. No, I, I didn't. I think we opened the chest. Okay, so I haven't. We haven't investigated the the dead body, have we? And and I don't remember if we searched the alchemy tables. You know, if there's any. Yeah. So I, if, you, we, if you guys are gonna do the other place, um, I could have uh, check everything. Yeah. So who, who's going to uh, search the alchemist? I will. Okay. So you roll uh, an investigation check um, with advantage, and who's going to look in the chest? Uh, I'm trying to think yeah. who's our who's our most perceptive. Um, <clears throat> well, it'll be an investigation check when you're looking. <clears throat> Mouse, I've only got plus two there. Um, Mouse, minus one. Mouse trips on his uh, way over to the alchemist. Um, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and, and, and rolls a one. Even Ouch. with advantage, but you got advantage. Oh, I got advantage. I'm sorry. I, so I roll again. Oh, that's better. Thank you, sir. I, I was not paying attention. So that would be investigation. So it's a uh, 22. 22. So on the alchemist, you do find one small red vial. And um, you find, um, was it a plain iron dagger? And... Um, this is probably about 27 gold pieces on the Argos. Nice. Dang, right. Nice. you got one small red vial on him. Okay, um, Luke here, take take the gold. Um, and uh, my lady, uh, I will give you this red vial. I don't know what it is. So. Yeah, she just, so like you put it down to the side. It's not it's not actually healing that she, she needs. It's like she, she's worn out from... Um, what's been done to her inside there for being trapped in there and also the suffering from the curse, the illness, the disease and the curse mm. combined is sort of like, you know, it's what's kind of, she's technically, uh, as it stands as she's, I think at, um, three or four points of exhaustion. On, um, I don't have a look at the table right now. I think it's four points of exhaustion, so she's like two steps away from death if she oh, gets wow. two more points of exhaustion. Um, and who was looking in the um, uh, the chest? I can do that. Body will. Okay, so um, roll an investigation check without Inve advantage, just on your own. Yeah. Oh, okay, no advantage. Investigation is intelligence of plus two. So, nine plus two, eleven. Okay, yeah, so it's not too bad. This it's pretty obvious. So, what you find, and give me one second, I believe it's this one, yes. So So you find a um, hundred and twenty copper pieces, seventy silver pieces, forty-five gold pieces. Glory be! One pearl worth a hundred gold pieces. A palm-sized, octagonal-shaped piece of obsidian, two inches thick. Depicting a ram's head on both sides, with Agent Nord writing on the side, worth 150 gold pieces. Uh, can I can I read the Ancient Nord? Yeah, you, I suppose you buy use of like you know, 
pass it back to Luke, seeing yeah. as it's sort of like something fancy. On the side of it, you read it reads Jarl Olaf of White Run. Uh-huh. And then you find another smaller box inside the chest, buddy. Ooh. Uh, can I proceed to open it, or is it locked or anything? Do you want to test to see if it's open? Yeah, let's take a look at it. Okay, so roll um, a dexterity uh, saving throw, please. Let's see. Oh. Dexterity is a plus three for me, so 12, 15. 15. I know it's there was no save on that because you're you're so close. Uh, no, sorry, it was a Constitution saving throw. And what did you say? You got fifteen? Yes, sir. Fifteen. You just made it, um, or you would have been poisoned for an hour. But as you go Ooh. to open. The uh, the little smaller box, uh, a needle comes right out of the side for it and jams you right in the finger. But being um, of the veil of wood, being of Bosma, um, you're sort of like you know used to sort of like you know bites and sort of like uh, poisons and sort of like you know definitely drinking all of that wrath meth has given you um, <laughs> um, sort of like um, a, a resistance to sort of like poisons and things like that so you just make it off and in inside the little box you find um, a cloudy uh, like three vials and one of them is a cloudy green fluid and it smells of the sea and has jellyfish like bubbles floating in it oh nice and then the second one is it's separated into brown, silver, and gray layers, resembling bands of stone. Shaking the bottle, it fails to mix the colors. And then the third one is a potion's red liquid glimmers when agitated. So you shake the other bottle, it's another small red vial, and they like little glimmers inside it. Hmm. Who'd like to take a look at this stuff? I'll I'll consult with the uh, with Abrusa if she uh, if she appeals appears capable of uh, of of examining those if she's not too exhausted. Yeah, so you bring them over to the table. She's currently sort of like um trying to get um like you know the one of the mud crabs trying to get the the chitin. Off of it, to sort of like you know, to, so she can. Uh, I think uh, Mouse has already gotten the um, uh, what you may call it, the cauldron up, and now she's at one of the alchemy tables, and she's sort of like working on the animal. You put them to the side, but she kind of acknowledges why you're putting them there, but um, she's kind of ignoring you. Okay, she's she's busy. Okay, she's not on the roll twenty map right now. No, she's not. Okay, no. okay. sorry. So so all right. So just because Luke Luke can't help. He can't help himself. He does. He wants. I want to do a history check to see if I know how long ago uh, uh, King Olaf was the Earl of, of White Run. Uh, go for just it. Because, uh, just because I cannot help myself. Yeah, roll a history uh, check. He, and he actually, know. Um, he, he roll, um, Botty, roll a history check as well. Uh, Luke, Luke rolls a nine on his history check. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. no. It doesn't ring any bells. Mouse should roll too since he. Oh God! Is that okay? Body that's asleep in the corner. This is completely without point, by the way. It's just a thing that Luke just as compulsively has to do when he, when he comes across <laughs> something that's ancient Nord related. Uh, oh, you got a four. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's just not coming to you after the the perspective of the day. Um, um, Can Mouse roll one as well? Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, but uh, he's been around a bit. So yeah, yeah go for it. Anyway, I mean, whether or not he knows. Uh, let's see, what have I got for? I got no. Prof- so it's 18. Oof, oh, 18, nice. yeah. Uh, the only one that you don't know whether it's the same one, but the only one you remember is uh, old Olaf One Eye. Right, Olaf the Destroyer. Yeah. 
so it's the it's the one where it's the fable who apparently captured um, a dragon in White Run. Ah. Yes. So I'll tell I'll tell that to certainly to, to Luke and to Body. Body will be very interested in the dragon part. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, may I may I remember the name of the dragon? <laughs> um. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because you've you've heard this um, sort of like you know walking through solitude and sort of like you know seeing the performance at yes. the Bard's College, sort of like you know watching them, sort of like you know a uh, one winter solstice time, sort of like yeah. So Numenex was the name of the dragon. That yeah, was, so I'll uh, tell Buddy about about having seen that uh, uh, at, in, at the Bard's College in uh, in solitude, having seen the the burning of King Olaf and and yeah. so. On. And and body writes down more another note. She already has a, a leaf in the back of her book, saying all the reasons why she has to get up to solitude to the Bard's College. Yeah. <laughs> add, add another note here. <laughs> so and uh, so that's what you got. You've currently got what you assume is. Um, two healing potions and two ones that you're not too sure of, but you've left to the side of, uh, of Rusa to have a, a, a shifty yet. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, she's currently, um, working on these alchemists and it's very slow going. Um, I would say Lenny is sort of um, yeah he's just swinging his um, his mace around getting used to it again um, and he's sort of like uh, eyeing you up a bit Luke and mm. and then he's sort of like looking back to um, George a bit he seems he seems to be thinking about something and it's got him troubled so uh, observing that, I, 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 uh, <laughs> if, if Lenny's, if Lenny's trying to think, I just got to support him in that, man. That, that's, yeah, that he's got, we got to, got to make that endeavor it, we succeed any way we can. So, uh, Lenny, what's, uh, what, what's, what's on your mind? Um, he's sort of like, you know, he's, he's scrunching up his eyes and his face and he's sort of like screaming on his eyes and he's, um, um, are you, um, uh, and he just hands you the Warhammer, the one that he's got, he just sort of like, you know, holds it right out to you, sort of like a, for you to take it, and he goes, um, you need, you can borrow this. So he's, he's handing me his, his big mall? Yeah. And he's just handing it to you. He's, he's holding it right out in front of you. Well, Lenny, this is this is yours. You need to... Yeah, yeah I know. You, you can borrow it. And George is taking a, a keen interest now. He's, she's turned around and she's like, Lenny, what's going on? And he's, he's like, I'm not, I'm not supposed to say... And he just he's just holding out the the warmer and he goes and he goes, give it back when you're back. And he's just just showing you, just giving it to you. Give it back when you're back. So Lenny, do you, is will will this help us? Um, with our, yeah, I'm not I'm not allowed to say. And uh, uh, was it George is walking over and she's pressuring him Lenny. Lenny, is this is this about about where you got that handle? Because I'm not allowed to say. And he's just handing it. Hold, he's holding it out, out to you. Okay, I'll I'll take it. And ex uh, you know, I, I glanced at it before when I picked it out of the chest. Obviously, it was his. Now, now I'm really going to examine it and try to figure out what's going on. What? Why is this? Is this? You know, I'm, I'm trying to make the mental connection. Is there a connection to a spriggan somehow? What's what, what's what's it's the just, connection? It just here? looked like it just looked like a big. And uh, like the head of it is like re, it's a really old iron head. You can see all all the corners. What you would usually you would think would have to be um, sort of like uh, like proper corners. They're all rounded. So the the head is really old. 
it's really really old iron and the the handle is really really new it's like almost brand spanking new and it's just one long looks like a like a tree branch apart from again as i said the <coughs> the sanded bits uh, parts that are down around the where the hands go and there's uh, leather wrapped around it and then uh, at the, the back of the mall just below where the head is uh, there's a shaved where the, the bark is slightly shaved off and then just burned in there along there it's just um, shields and there's just the, the name of the mall and he's just sort of like he just hands it to you and um, George is looking at him quizzically she's going uh, she just looks back into you and she goes shrugs her shoulders and she goes When um, Balamond uh, offered to make him a weapon, he said, go get me a piece of wood, a big piece of wood for this um, thingy. And he didn't come back for three days. And then he just came back with that. That. I, I don't know. So he never told me um, what it means, but... It obviously means something to him, so... But... And she sort of, like, you know, points at you. That's his. So give it back when it's when you're done with it. Of, of course. Uh, of course. So I... I, I now this... Uh, see, uh, these things have to be wielded two-handed, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um... So let me... Let me uh, so I guess I I, I I drop my I drop my warhammer and my shield and give it a couple of uh, give it a couple of test swings. I mean, I think Luke's Luke's strong. He's not as big as Lenny, but he's strong enough to wield it. So and he's yeah, got yeah. he's got martial proficiency, so he can do it. So yeah. I, I give it a couple of test swings and see if there's anything special about it, other than it's a great big honking mall. Yeah, no, nothing. You don't feel anything from it at all. Just feels like a big chunk of wood, real fucking heavy head. Um, sort of like it, as you're swinging it, the head is so heavy that it pulls you around with it. So that's probably <laughs> where it gets its power. Is that what, sort of like you know, swing back and then swing it out, and then it pulls you along. So it adds your strength, and it's just the momentum, the, the strength from the momentum of it spinning around. So it, you hit something with that full arm with the, enough strength is going to do some serious damage. But you're not detecting. There's no magical sheen to it. it it's not like uh body sword it, it's not in like prime pristine condition uh there's bits of the bark is flaking off of it it's starting to get worn there's like fingerprints all over it so it's definitely not a magical weapon it's just you know, it just looks pretty normal to um looking at it okay all right i'll uh Lenny, thank you I, I will take the best possible care that i can of this and uh Return it to you promptly upon our return. He just um, not. He's, he's still got his like. A, he's kind of like trying to scrunch up his face, so he can't see or hear anything. That kind of thing. So, and he sort of like you know he just nods his head. Sort of like you know, he walks over to um, where the fire has started back up again under the cauldron. And sort of like you know trying to warm himself up and dry himself off. Uh, and he says, um, "I'm hungry." So let's go. Let's go. We're going. We need to go get this spriggan. So, Bati should Bati will stay. I'll um, hang out uh, and torture these people with. Uh, <laughs> I wrote some new lyrics to uh, the Dragonborn comes. I, I'm sure these people would love to hear. It. Mouse throws up a little bit in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> So is, does does George appear to have the same symptoms of exhaustion that uh, Abrusa does, or is is she okay now that she's had a rest? I guess she's at hit yeah. points. I guess she's she's okay. Yeah, she's um pretty okay. Uh, she still has the, the the signs of it coming up there at the side of her, like at the top part, part of her torso. Torso, you can see it just coming creeping out below the armor uh, around where the neckline is. But yeah, no, she's nowhere near as um, sort of like gaunt and as sort of like you know. Uh, as haggard looking as uh, as Avruza is. So, G George, do you would you like to come with us and leave uh, Lenny and Body to help Avruza? Uh, 
I prefer not to. Um, yeah, no, I prefer to stay with Lenny. If if you want, me and Lenny can stay with Evrusa, um, or we can go with you. And the two of us go, but no, it's it's me and Lenny, or it's okay. It's both That's... of us, or neither of us. I'm afraid. Okay. So, so Mouse, how how far how far a march is the uh, Spriggan Grove? I, I wouldn't guess it more than uh, about a half a day. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, we we I best. Know, I don't know what time it is right now. So you're probably you got there um, probably about midday. So you're probably looking around about um, late evening now. So we should probably rest. Before. That's a decision. Uh, Avrusa said to you that you need to go now. Okay, that's um, right. Yep, sorry. Well, so we it's um, they, well, we must. We should. But it's up to you. But you also, yeah. But you also know, and I mean, it's it was it's Avrusa who told you that you need to go now. Um, not the DM is telling you that you need to go now. So <laughs> you know. That uh, well, well, Luke, you for a fact you know that you are spent as, as far as like well, you think you're spent as, as far as uh, spells and powers goes. Um, yeah. so if, um, probably Jaquai is fine because he's had a short rest there, so he's managed to get his um, his things back. Uh, but Botty um, expended a few spells as well. So you you know that you're not a full strength. It's getting towards the end of the day now. You've traveled some. You've been in a fight. Uh, you've battled some. So you've probably taken some hits, and so you're not at your best. So What's the minimum we can rest for Luke to to uh... a full night's rest, a, full a long night. rest. <clears throat> That's starving, bedding down, sleeping for the entire night. Mm. Mm. Should we? Uh... Luke, what do you think? Do you? I, 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 I so, 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 in, 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 in just game, gaming terms, not character terms. In gaming terms, I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of spells, but I'm actually at full hit points. So, uh, so maybe to put it in character terms, uh, should we perhaps get a couple of hours start and uh, and camp along the way rather than rather that, than uh, not starting until morning? I think that's a good idea. We should get we should get going. Should we? We should bring Jaquai uh, if we're going to be traveling in the dark. Yes. Jaquai, are you willing to come? Um, I am, but I'm kind of flicking my head, nodding you towards Body and I. Um, it's so. So I'm, we don't really know the three people that were planning on leaving here alone. Mm -hmm. You're right. I would, I would really suggest that body and I stay here and you take George and Lenny with you. Um, if, if this is going to be a fight, it's going to be, uh, you know, a fright fight where you need some brute strength, but also we don't want to leave the three of them here because we don't really know what their relationship is and you know, what they're, you know, what they're thinking. Um, so that's, that's my suggestion. I'll, I'll certainly go along with whatever you guys think, but that's where I'm coming from. I'm looking over at Luke with a. I, 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 I note the, uh, the wisdom of, uh, of Jaquai's caution. Um, okay, I think well we, then, I think, you know, just me mentally turning over my head, I, I think we've, I think we've come to, to trust Laniel's good intentions, but also he's clearly impressionable and we don't know George other than, other than a couple of hours here in this, uh, in this cave. So, uh, Jaquai's caution is, uh, likely, uh, merited. Okay. And, uh, Luke, perhaps you should, uh, ask the two of them to come with us and we should get going. If we can get a little bit of travel in while it's still twilight before it gets too dark, then we can rest for a little while. Hopefully we can find a safe spot between here and the Sprig and Grove. So I'll, I'll go over uh, to maybe uh, and uh, and uh, say to George, 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 a, a, a moment. Do you, 
and I, I just sort of pull her to the side. Yeah, you, she, are you and Lenny? Do you feel fit to travel to help us with this uh, this little mission to to search a to seek out a taproot? The two of you together. Yeah. Um, if uh, if if that's what you think, um, I I am <laughs> I am in your debt up to the up to the eyeballs. Um, I uh, okay again. I it was my own stupidity that led me here and led Lenny there and um, my own rashness and brashness I uh, that's, uh, sorry for my brusqueness earlier on but uh, I'm not letting them out of my sight again that's good uh, we can use your help uh, but uh, yes definitely um, as you're oh. talking uh, of Russo's she goes um, I understand wanting to um, go there with I uh, like you know fully geared and ready but just so you know and she's pointing to the river as it's passing through um, this stuff is not going to wait she goes you you have a decision to make the longer you wait the more this is going to spread he couldn't help glorifying his own work and would uh, repeatedly go on about how insidious this poison he created is. The longer we wait, the more it's going to, the more damage it's going to do. Um, and George is sort of like nodding along with her, especially when she said he couldn't, wouldn't shut up about how how evil it was. Um, Luke, and, do you have anything in you that we could get there without without rest? Can do you have? Are you strong enough to to at least attempt to bargain with the Springen? Um, <clears throat> let me let me ponder a moment here. Um, uh, you've. So you uh, you probably take about sort of like you know five minutes just to sit down and sort of like um, have a little um, was it meditation sort of like holding onto your holy symbol. You have um, one um, level two spell slot, um, but the one that you did use was. Um, was cast using you you as an intermediary. It was cast by your deity and sort of like pass through. So you have no level two spells prepared, but you can cast a level one spell through your level two slot. So you can cast any of those, but you still only have one. You have used your channel divinity as well, so you don't have that either. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay. Luke, while Luke is thinking, I'm going to, I just need to walk over and speak to Body quietly. Body, um, I bought this whip and it turns out that I stink at using it uh, so I'm going to give it to you because I think you might uh, you might be able to use it better than I so I give I give body my whip oh that's fun I'll uh, light some candles over here and practice putting them out <laughs> <laughs> you, snap, you snap me with the littlest bit woman and we're going to be Devin to <laughs> <laughs> or, or she, or she's going to tie a feather on it and use it like one of those cat toys for Jaquai to chase around the cave. Right? <laughs> You're giddy, giddy, giddy. Uh, perfect. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so so Luke's uh, Luke um, after his little meditation, uh, sort of says, you know, my my spiritual resources are uh, are flagging a bit, but uh, I'm 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 healthy and, and able to travel. Okay, well, not let's, go. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's get there. Um, I need to do whatever I can to stop what I started. This was not your doing, Mouse. Well, you, I, you. I'm the one who pushed it in there. I, I know I did it for the, what I thought were the right reasons, but it turns out to have been a complete disaster. So I need to, I need to make good on that. 
we'll, we're, 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 we'll, we're in it together. We'll, uh, we'll resolve it. We'll get it. The Avrusa with the skills of Avrusa and, and our own wits and skills and our two companions here. We'll, we'll, we'll get it done. I, I have faith. Uh, you, as you finish that, you turn your round and Lenny's like two inches from your face with his hands out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I give him back his maul. Come on, Lenny. <laughs> he literally snatches it over and he goes, hey, uh, sorry, if I'm going with you. Uh, uh, yeah. And he, he just sort of like, you know, walks back to, <laughs> back to George. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So um, marching order is um, Luke and Mouse. Um, Laniel and George are all heading out um, to, to go down to head to the Spriggan and Jaquai and Botty are remaining behind with uh, Avrusa to help her out as she needs uh, with help um, as she can. So well, as you're there, um, Jaquai and Botty, um, she says she points you to various things. So um, she points to the um, further alchemy table and she uh, says to you, you body to go over there and just uh, uh, was it um, says to take over the um, the jar of um, what should we call it uh, hawk feathers so um, as you're taking them out she wants you to start preparing them so she tells you how to do it so I'm going to need you to uh, roll an uh, intelligence check to see how well you can do that, and how long this is going to take you. This is going to be a series of checks. Uh, Ooh, boom. 20 with a, uh, so, so 22 there. Oof, wow. Yeah, nice. so uh, being a, a bard, and uh, literally you have been around everywhere and everything, sort of like, you know, just assimilating information just for that. And just as she starts talking about it, she, you, it comes back to you. Uh, sort of like, you know, talking to, um, was it literally, it was like a, an alchemist convention, um, sort of like in the Imperial City. And you were just sitting in there at the next to the table, just slowly strumming. And you just found what they were talking about so soothing. Sort of like, you know, talking about this and that. You just learn so much, just listen to it. And it all comes back to you. It's like, yeah, hawk feathers. Yeah, you're supposed to take off the nib and then strip it down the center and stuff like you. She's amazed by your, your quality and your skill at it. Um, to Kwai, she sends you over to the other table. And um, she has you with the mud crab chitin. Chitin, shall I say. Not chitin. I used to call it chitin when I first started playing Skyrim. Um, I, um, basically, what she wants is that she just wants um, the... Um, the pinchers. She she wants a, a certain part of that, so you just got to separate from all those. So you roll, um, let's see, a dexterity check because you're just tearing them apart and trying to break them off and get the exact piece that she needs from every um, mud crab. Okay, and is that with proficiency? It is. Yeah, you're proficient. In the, so it's kind of like a strike. You're using your claws trying to sort of like get in there. And don't forget to suck out those delicious legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that is 16. 16, nice. yeah, good enough. Um, so you guys are carrying on with that, and she's um, taking the ingredients from you as you're preparing them for, and then she's like adding them to the uh, the uh, alembic and uh, pummeling some in, in another... Uh, pestle and mortar and other parts of it so like making it all up so she's all there so you guys are going there we'll get back to you there so you guys are heading out and you are heading um south are you uh mouse i think it's a little bit southwest i i guess i should uh try to figure out if i know exactly where it is um, um yeah you can roll um a history check and uh, let's that would be um, a 10 10 yeah uh, I mean you, you've been past it and you can see it uh, mm -hmm. from the road um, as you're walking past it um, heading up towards the um, uh, towards the, the lake itself so um, 
you because you didn't have much trouble earlier on you say that we uh, to head um the way head back the way Jaquai came up he didn't have any problems with animals so he sort of started to leave them there um roll a survival check the way Jaquai came up from where now i'm sorry i, I missed something when you approached um the uh Fall Creek oh, tower right, right, right. Yeah, okay. um Jaquai came up the back way oh boy not so good um that would be a five. Five. Um, it probably, to get there, you're probably looking around about getting lost a little bit along the way. You're probably looking uh, yeah, a good six or seven hours before you can actually make it out there. It, it comes to you like three quarters of the way that you probably should have like you know been veering to the left the whole time to get yourself onto the road, come down and then come back in again. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you just thought that as usual no, no, yeah, self confidence got the better of him. Yeah. yeah, that and like you know, your guilt from what happened back there, you just want to get there as quickly as possible. So sort of like, you know, you're pushing and sort of like so so Luke, you see him sort of like, you know, getting very agitated and sort of like, you know, looking up at the moon, looking at the stars and the sort of like, you know, the the position of the moss on the trees, which side it's on, and he's sort of like, you know, <laughs> getting himself all flustered and sort of like, you know, stomping through, getting caught and cutting brambles and he's just like, ah! He starts getting angry and angry, but you do finally make it. Alright, so, so it's about midnight then. Yeah, it will be. So, I have a couple of things to do. So, uh, uh, no, that was the wrong one. Give me one second. I've just got to change something before. Uh -huh. New, new map. back here and um, you remember this this is kind of like um, the old mounds so it has a, a raised bit here that's sort of like starting on the bottom and it's lost within the forest um, some of it but it, then it goes up in a steady slope going up there leading to an open part which you can't see inside obviously yet because you haven't walked up and Mouse, you know that there is like a foot level entrance around here, around this side and this side to be able to get in, um, or you can come in um, over the top. But what you decide to do, you all are currently over here. So I assume once you got this close to it, you are going to hold back from getting too close to it as to have people over aware of your uh, presence well I guess um, I should try to uh, just sneak up and look over and see if I can see a, a Spriggan or not inside there from, from the side that we're on if I can climb up there which I should be able to do so yeah, it's a pretty gentle slope. Uh, if you want to roll a stealth check for me, please. Nat twenty. Nice. Awesome. So, um, you uh, move yourself. Here. Something like that. Oops, I can't. Yeah. I can't go into the square that's partially black. Okay, so I'll yeah. move. I'll go here and then. Yeah, have a. You're having a look over the edge. You want to roll a. Perception check for me, please. <laughs> uh, 
let's see, perception. Sixteen. Sixteen, yeah, that's uh, plenty. So. In there. <laughs> you have a good look, and you can hear them before you see them. Just here. Oh, that was the wrong one. Button. Oh, them. Uh, mm. Just here. Okay. And over here, you see two black bears. Oh, okay. And they are not happy. They are not in the best of moods, and they are not in the best of conditions. You see all the fur. Uh, some of it has started to fall off. And mm. you see black patches start to work its way up the side the long veiny streaks of black poison uh, going across bare patches of skin um, you see um, shrubs and things like that of that, but you see no spriggan okay so I'm gonna sneak back to the party then to report on their, on what I've seen yep Go for it Alright, so uh, I'll, of course, Mouse is going to essentially address all of his reports to Luke. <laughs> um, there's two very sick bears, but I see no spriggans. The bears seem sick and in pain and irritated about something. Probably mm. the fact they're sick and in pain. <laughs> um, but I, I did not see a spriggan. So, it uh, seems we're here. It seems we should perhaps go investigate a little more closely. Um, yeah, there's. I couldn't, I couldn't see under that, that stone arch that's directly above us here uh, to see if there's a cave in there or not. I should have looked. Oh, you mean this? Yeah. Uh, no, that's just a, a bad design of this picture. I found this one, which was pretty similar to the Skyrim ones, but it had this thing on it. So okay. you can ignore this. This is just... Uh, okay. So there's no ent- that's not an entrance to something else? No, that's not an entrance okay. to anything. It's just the way this thing was built. I found this as it is. All I have to do is just stick it on and then mm-hmm. add a few bears and a few trees and shrubs and things like that. So the entrance is still over at this side. You've approached it. From from over here, from this way, and um, I wonder if we can, uh, if there's any way we can lure the bears out without having to to fight them and and go in there and investigate a little more. Um, does anybody have any meat or or anything that might lure them out? Only, uh, only, just be what's in what's in my pack. Mm. And you know, George and Lenny, I'm sure have have probably even less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. They're both they're both sort of like hunkering down and sort of like um, Kim went back and sort of like uh, Lenny is uh, holding his weapon out and so is uh, George and she's sort of like you know facing uh, towards Lenny and sort of like you know nodding her head at this and she's like, well. Oh. Do you mind if I go and take a look? No, please do. She's gonna roll a stealth check. Oof. (laughs) With her modifiers, George. Team is in the uh, uh, six. So, yeah, um, George decides to get in closer to try and get a little look, but just as she gets to about here, um, she misses a tree stump and falls forward. And because she has the two scimitars, they both clang into the side of the of the runes as she gets closer. 
and um, all you hear from the inside. <laughs> growls and mm. things coming from the inside of this and um, that's what we're going to pick up next time <laughs> on uh, Skyrim 1080 Ooh. so we'll see where it leads into next time. Thank you very much everybody for joining us and awesome. um, I'm sorry about the um, the bad start but uh, as I said my uh, my players saved my ass thank you guys Skyrim 1080 would like to thank Tabletop Audio for the use of their music in this podcast. If you would like to find more music like this, just go to tabletopaudio.com for more information. Thank you. Thank you for downloading this edition of Skyrim 10 AD. Email the show at skyrim 10 ad at gmail.com. For more information, please visit asapodcasting.com where you will find a Skyrim Attic podcast, the Fallout feed, and our Amazon link which benefits the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Find our social media in the show notes. Thanks for listening.